Okay. Sounds like the apostles here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, oh, yeah. five, six, seven, Whoa. eight. Wow, we're we're two, four short. Two. <laughs> I'm the I'm an archangel. Uh, okay. And we have the the dead ones who are the late people who are not here yet, which we encourage late people. Steve, Ray's coming, right? Ray's Frank, supposed to be Frank coming. Will be here, yeah. I don't know if Steve's coming or not. I didn't hear anything. Oh, what was that thing you sent me? The mat. Yep. It was MQTT and oh, okay. autocorrect. <laughs> it fixed it for you. Autocorrect fixed that for me. Okay. I, I said that looks familiar, but Matt, how, well, there is a Matt, and we know Matt. We haven't seen Matt for a while. No, I, I don't know. I, I love autocorrect except when it corrects what so, I'm trying to say. Okay, do you, are you ready, Vicente? You want to do your thing? Almost. I have bad news. Okay. <laughs> Does it work? It doesn't work? Technicality. Yeah, it's play by. Uh, Comcast. Yes. Maybe. What's your computer doing? Oh, there I, I there said, I find. <laughs> Your i is being slow today. Okay. After after all that talk about fast computers. Yeah. <laughs> and this, this year and a half on the on the laptops we have a solid state uh, hard drives. I read something about. You need that. That's what we were just grabbing them. I just I was, had to use one that didn't have a solid state drive. One of my i fives, and I took a nap. There I was rebooting. Takes more than twelve seconds to boot. Um, I I don't know. So you you're that you're, you're, you're David, David. Don't you're try David. to do stuff. James. James. You're James. You're David. Mark. Right. No Mark. I, I don't Steve's know. Steve's not. Steve's coming. I don't know anything. I'm not here. Uh, Steve is not here. There's some. Of <coughs> it is. Automation technology. Chair. This is some of that consumer friendly packaging. Here's your name. And your name? I'm Zach. Zach? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your interest, Zach? I want to get into building Arduino project. Like open forest projects. Okay. I'm pretty new to it. So. That's fine. There's we we welcome everyone. There's the people that can tolerate us. <laughs> There's experience levels of just about every kind here. I I don't know what your years are. Maybe you need to start maybe start Chrome yeah. over again. I don't you're know. We, you're a little bit late. We encourage people to come in late. So that's good. We appreciate that. It's almost like it's there, but it's just not time or anything. I put the website at 5.30 myself, too. 5.30 yeah, is... Yeah, at 5.30 yeah. to 7. And it's uh, 5 to... 5.30 is the informal time, and you come into 5, and people will you people will be in here at 5. We'll be out there at 4.30 in the break area. Oh, and at 5, we... Huh? Didn't it used to be 4? We used to, nah, we might have said that, but we left. There you uh, go. So you start sure, sure. congregating out, in the, out there at 4.30, you yeah. migrate back here by There five. you go. Yeah. I don't know what, what And then the was. formal start is 5.30. So basically, you've got this room from 5 to 7. Yes. Yeah. And, we, and he's out of here, Johnny on the spot, 7 o'clock. Yeah, we'll beat you over the head at uh, 7. <laughs> the Gestapo <laughs> appears yes. at 7. And we get everybody out. He even puts the alarm on five minutes before just to wind Yeah, that's our, that's our drop dead time <laughs> to pack up. And we're talking about serious packing up. Uh, we're a very informal group. We have fun. Uh, we try to uh, promote positive mental attitude here, be supportive to your fellow members, uh, particularly the demo givers, because they're here. They've invested time and effort. Into, uh, into the organization. 
I actually had a woman here copying stuff off of our list one time. You know what? She was, she was sitting over here. What? She was trying to trying to advertise for all the Yeah, she was advertising. She was like an advertising company. And she was copying down the thing to her people who okay. promoted through magazines. Was she here just two or three times ago? No, it was a while back. It was okay. last year. We had somebody here last summer who had a I thought it was a 3D printing company uh, over. That's Ray. Ray, Ray, over the Ray, Ray will be here tonight. No, 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 that's no. A, he's the woman. 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 Oh, okay. Well, this is a woman. She was only here once when I was there, mm -hmm. and she had a 3D printing company, not a laser cutting company, but a 3D printing company mm. out east on 32 or whatever. Mm. Okay, so it's uh, what you'll get is a meeting yeah, announcement you can, you can uh, before you next meeting to let you know what's going on. We're on Meetup. That's where you found us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll send you a meeting announcement. Uh, on the meeting announcement at the top, you'll, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's the meetup.com link, meeting announcement. This is the live web page. During the week, I'm updating it. You can see what I'm doing, if anything, if I'm awake. Uh, li a link to the videos. Uh, Leroy does a video. He's recording right now. Uh, and you get used to what you see here. And then you can, if you have a strong stomach, you can watch the video. And then uh, <coughs> the uh, Google Plus discussion group. We have topics. Uh, Vicente, Leroy, whoever, bring a topic up and you can see what's going on over there. And if you want to participate, we encourage that. Uh, and some meeting notes for me I throw in there. You can't make me stop. And then uh, what's going on this week? And that's about it. Pretty informal group. Yeah, volunteer if you will have something you want to give a demo on. Feel free to volunteer. We'll ask for volunteers at the end of the meeting for next week. Otherwise, you're going to get the TCT transport which all these guys know what it is. That's my project. <laughs> and you'll be abused by that. Nobody volunteers. Thanks, that encourages <laughs> volunteers. <laughs> Does it, that thing actually make... work? Well, it's actually a device now it, it, with four wheels. It's and real. Is that the Rube Goldberg trash conveyance? Would you sh not, that, that, not as PMI, positive mental attitude here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll quarter. actually carry a, a full that's my, garbage that's bucket my or not? Or? Not yet. That's a piece of pizza. No. That's a piece of pizza. Hey, nobody will get a good shot at that next week. Our pizza's bigger so than what our motivation now is this? Is this one of those regular plastic garbage buckets that has wheel has uh, a she, she's, control she's, it's two, she's a control system? It's going to be what it is. Is it's a looks like a wagon. It's made out of steel, four pneumatic tires There's on bubble it. Gum up on the it has a uh, to get to it. chain drive, yeah. and it has a, uh, a motor scooter motor on it, yeah. an electric motor scooter motor on it, and a chain mechanism, and all that's connected, and I got the drive out, and my next step is to put heavy gauge wire on to see if I can get it to turn the motor through the drive. So that's where we are now. Well, the software I've, I've demonstrated before prototyped small scale using a compass, driving that down the driveway uh, with a compass. I've driven uh, a thousand feet back and forth up and down the driveway and ended up within six inches of the starting point. That's well, pretty good. Using a compass? Now, we'll, using a compass. Say did it. Yep. Will, it, will it survive when the Gripper from the garbage truck picks it up and goes, oh. well, Yeah, it's going to be stock. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, what it is, it has sides on it. You can flip the sides down and put the trash cans there. Or you oh, put the trash okay. cans up. So your choice. Okay. Okay, so it's not one of the one of those plastic 60-gallon things for yeah. a rookie. Uh, it could be. You, it's it's a platform. It's a four-wheel pneumatic platform, and it's a it's a wagon is what it is. It's a heavy-duty wagon yeah. with flip-up sides. You may have seen some of them. The sides flip up, and you flip the sides down and put the trash can on top. Two, two, uh, probably the rookie industrial size one. Yeah. Well, the trash guy's going to have to put the 
container back on the wagon. Yeah, the, the main intent, so. the main intent is for uh, people of advanced years, which doesn't yeah. include me or anyone in this group, but people of advanced years, my dad had this, yeah. and he had to take the trash can down. His trash can was, you know, 300 feet, okay? And I just want to get the trash can down there. Yeah. And we can probably, right now, our guys don't pick it up with it. We don't have a trash can that you pick up with a mechanism. Yeah. So just put it on the platform, take it up there, and let you take it off. And, yeah. And not necessarily put it back on because when he puts it down, it's going to be empty. It should be yeah. relatively easy to get back on there and you just drive it down. Oh, the yeah, main yeah. thing is when it's heavy, going up the hill or down the hill, this case may be. What, one of my previous neighbors actually was the garbage man for our neighborhood. Yeah. And I actually asked him about it and he said he wouldn't have a problem sticking it back on. Yeah. But he might have a problem if there were like a hundred of them yeah. <laughs> slowing his line uh, slowing, slowing it down yeah but i asked him and he said no i don't think i'd have a problem with just putting it back on the on the now, wagon. you guys live around here monroe yeah, that's close. everybody everybody's all over the place liberty, liberty township the uh, we actually used to meet in Middletown, a library, yeah, yeah, and South this is more central. There are more people in this area, and of course, the more advanced high tech people are in Monroe area, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. the Calif the refugees from California, we got no, we got no idea. This is laid out very similar to the Middletown library, isn't it? No, I haven't been up there in years. <laughs> no, no. This is this is very different. This is a nice library. I, I like the Middletown <laughs> Library too. How do you mean I, that? I, I, I see, they have QSC Magazine. <laughs> QSC Magazine up at Middletown Library. Um, just be aware. Middletown Library is a nice. It's a yeah. nice library. This is just. I grew up in Middletown. They had an old yeah. library. This, this is bigger. It's, yeah, this is bigger, nicer, right? newer. Yeah. Same, yeah. That one up there. Nice. Same system. It's the same people that Midpoint, own it. Midpoint runs uh, Oxford here. I, think I hear they're going to maybe town. build one in Liberty Township. Uh, there's there. there's one. There's a Midpoint in Monroe. There's one in Trenton. Yeah. yeah. But this is the biggest. It's it's the nicest one they've got. Which they've got a, nice Hamilton conference Township. rooms here. It's uh, just it's just a nice. Is this Hamilton Township? No. Middle, this is, this middle, is, there's nothing wrong with Middletown Library, but this is County is it though? It's Butler County. You go into Monroe, you're heading into Warren County. Well, I'm in Butler County. Some oh. of it's in Warren. And so yeah, so. Okay. Depending on where you are. Wow, there's Ray. I warned you that he would be here. I got friends that live off of Still Pass. Some of them, are, some of the kids on one side of the street, they go to Lakota, and the other side goes to Monroe. Yeah. Anyway, school districts. So this is Vicente's okay. device he's passing around. So, uh, let me yeah. start. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was playing with uh, pencils, designing circuits directly on paper, right? Uh, and was uh, the investigation was to to find out the the impedance or the the resistance of different pen, pencils of different numbers. And usually. In, uh, the norm, normal pencil to be, for example, is, is too, has too high impedance to, to do something practical. Yes. And uh, looking for different pencils, found uh, this uh, German uh, leads or of two millimeters, the same one that goes inside the, the pencil. German leads, okay. Yes, leads. And this, this one has uh, 500 ohms. Okay. The system alone for for the whole length yes. here, and and, and then uh, in two years ago, I think about this idea of to use the the, the rods of the, the of the pencil to to find the position of a steel ball, uh, making a, a short between two of them, right? Mm -hmm. One of them can be a Stanley uh, stainless steel rod, and the other one is the resistance. Uh, it's like oh, so the, these are both not pencil leads. Huh? These are not both pencil. No, both are pencil, but oh, one, one can be just uh, metal. Because uh, you only you, you only need to use one, one. side. Of the other one the is position. the is the cursor or the the pointer along the 
Oh, okay. And there was this yeah. like the slider on a yes. potentiometer. Yeah. I got yeah, you. Yeah, right. Actually, I, I, I did another experiment with, uh, this is the, the, the plastic corners cool. to protect the corners of the house. And it has a, a, some peeling uh, adhesive, right? I bought uh, this stand, stand, stainless, stainless steel, steel. Uh, thing in a hobby store. Mm -hmm. And bought the, I don't know if you know the, the, the film called uh, Velostat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a plastic that is conductive. Oh, okay. okay. You can use to to design pressure sensors or anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I put a strip of, of the of the, this plastic and did the same thing. You, 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 the, the cursor is a metal one and this is a resistive uh, strip. Right. Okay. I, I was uh, experimenting with it, but there is a lot of, of trouble trying to to have a steady contact. You know, I clean. The, the the surface I bought yesterday bought a twelve twelve dollars uh, liquid used in the in the train in modern trains mm -hmm. on the tracks yeah this yeah. is some mist of uh, oil and conductive uh, mm -hmm. uh, molecules or something that increase the conductivity mm -hmm. not nothing, nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, I did some <laughs> filtering using um, a low pass filter using RC filter. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I, then I use digital filtering, averaging the, the thing, uh, limiting the, the differential change of, of the signal, but it was impossible to have a steady signal to feed the PID controller, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I will show how, how I. Uh, can you slide it down? Yeah, made a graph of the of the position of the ball, but it was impossible to. I pass it back down again. Are you going to use it, or are you, are you going to pass it around? Okay, he's going to use it. Okay. This is an Arduino Nano. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the potentiometer is uh, only moving the the servo. Mm -hmm. There we go. The servo moves the, the, the servo, the position of the, of the servo, right? Yeah. This, this signal, uh, I plan to use the potentiometer as, as the set point. Okay, the set point and the, the, the controller of the servo will be the PID controller. Mm -hmm. you, you, you decide where you want to put the, the ball the potentiometer and, and the servo will try to maintain the ball in position mm -hmm. but the problem is that uh, the signal of the the signal of the position you will see is very very annoying it's, you, you can i clean several times and, and i am using a processing a sketch to show the To show the position of the ball. So the fundamental problem was the surface contact with the yeah, rod. the quality of the surface. Yeah. It's having would a problem. Would a heavier the ball bearing work? Excuse me. Would a heavier ball bearing work? I try with with different balls, a heavier and lighter. This is this is a very big one here. I try with all the sizes. I was thinking gold. I was going to go. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I, the last thing I was thinking was to use a uh, graphite, uh, graphite uh, power, okay, to to increase the conductivity. But I, I have no no hopes to to use this. I probably this way have gone of, with a um, conductive rubber rather than a conductive plastic. the The reason for conductive rubber is that. Um, the weight of the ball can be larger and it'll increase your contact. Yes, I, by pressure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have more contact surface. Mm -hmm. Response because, because the deformed a little bit, went that also? I don't know why it's not. I, have a bit of, I don't know what's going on. Your, your computer's yeah. not liking you today. 
basically at all. Like a capacitor. Yeah. Your mechanical movement. It's not a big deal. It's the same thing. There's lots of different kinds of um, conductive rubbers. <sighs> but there's more extremely non conductive rubbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you Sign in. What? Can I sign in? You see the, 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 the position. Hey, he's talking over here. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, no, it's crazy. That's what gas prices do. <laughs> Boy, you got that right. The lion to you, going to go down. Oh, they're right back. Oh, why do you have two conductive rods? Or two, two you, you only need uh, one, one rod uh, with, the, uh, with the resistance. It's a, a, a lead of, of a pencil. Lead, yeah. What's and the other, other one of? can be a, a metal rod. But For you, are they both lead or do you have one metal? But but I'll, I'll, I'll let but are they different? Well, no. One has voltage applied, mm -hmm. and and the other one is, is the sensing signal. It would seem like no matter where you move down that your total conducted resistance doesn't change very much at all. No, this is this is the, the if one is fully conducted. This is the, the one of the rod. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the other yeah. one, the other one, oh, so uh, behaves like like a resistor that can change a little bit, but is is the the, the the impedance of the of the microcontroller is uh, several hundred ohms, hundred thousand ohms, mm -hmm. and this resistance is uh, two hundred ohms. Mm -hmm. you, you can assume that this is a short. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter if this change a little bit, you have always the same voltage. Okay. And the upper resistor you said was 500 across the whole length, right? This, this one has a 400 ohms. On yours, 400? On, on, on the on the, 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 yeah. the other one, if you use a metal, this will be 0 ohms, but it doesn't change the, the, the sample of the voltage. So the input impedance of the uh, Arduino is the input impedance. The analog pin, the input analog pin. Yeah. You can use uh, maybe a uh, hundred thousand ohms impedance. Okay. We change a little bit the, the voltage. It's, it's better yeah. to have lower impedance, 10 k, 10 k mm -hmm. ohms or so. Sometimes it's heavy. This, this is a. I, I am using here a filter of the of the signal. Mm -hmm. I'm using the, the 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 last sample multiplied by eight plus the actual sample multiplied by two, and uh, many, many all the time filtering all the time. Uh, but what's the sampling rate? Um, I have a delay of uh, a delay of uh, 10, 10 milliseconds. 10. Will, will be a hundred a hundred samples per second. Hundred samples per second. But uh, if you see this, this doesn't work. And now you've just knocked it out of USB again. Yes, it's, it's a false contact. You get one of those uh, motors out of the Android phones that vibrates continuously. That's good. And, and another thing is to uh, to use the, the servo in a different way. No, I, I am using it in the, in the center. 
You could use it on an eccentric cam on one end. The center yeah. is the worst, the worst, uh, worst place. You put the servo yeah. here, and the servo moves five, five or ten degrees. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the beam moves a lot, right? Did you use the servo? Did you put the uh, a point of articulation for the beam here and put the servo maybe here? You may, may move the servo, for example, 90 degrees, and and, and the, the beam moves a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have more control, more resolution, more steady behavior. It's, but, a, it's a better idea to change this design, but the problem, the main problem is the the, the signal, the, the, the input of the, of the controller. It, it, it don't behave. Right. So I, years ago, I designed a, um, a PID controller for a World Fair arm, robot arm, and part of the design was we had to have the PID plus a dither, and the dither is like a constant vibration mm -hmm. that happens in it, and it prevents what's called stiction. It's okay. something that gets stuck. So as long as it's constantly vibrating, yeah, um, to, to, it's to, almost indistinguishable, but it's it's there. I need to to do something additional work with this. Yeah, and so that's a good that's, search that's test. How it's going? Yeah. Now this is this is uh, the a processor that's similar to the Uno. Yes, it's the same it's, the same processor. It's same. the same processor. It's the which one? Eighty eighty mega three twenty eight. Three eighty mega. Eighty mega. And that's what there's a specific name for it. Oh, the nano? nano? The nano? This is the nano, yeah. Yeah. It's a nano knockoff, right? It's yes, not a real yes, nano. Not real, but it's, it's yeah. Dollar ninety. No, 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 it's the real one. <laughs> Two fifty. Uh, in the in the meeting announcements you'll see that uh, there people have different folders. They're on the cloud. Like Leroy has a folder, has uh, some uh, Arduino projects. I have a folder with some Arduino projects. Uh, you might look around and see if there's some projects interesting to you or maybe one you'd want to do mm -hmm. are, are similar. So. I, I, I rather want to use the, this, this Arduino because I can... Something happened. I can <laughs> use it directly in the, in the breadboard, right? And, yeah. and it's small, and you can combine with different components, resistors, and all kind of stuff, and other chips. Or also, that's really nice. It's, it's very, it's very cheap. The it's, nano plugged right into it's the. It's less, board. less than two dollars. Yeah. yeah. I, I almost use one for each project, and all the projects are. Just leave it on. In, in, in the in the drawer there. Yeah. I, I have several years of projects accumulated, right? You play with the IDE. Yeah. Just, I just have like a beginner book. Yeah. <laughs> I started That's all that. I have right now. Arduino? It's easy. Yeah. I've never heard of Arduino. I've never heard of Arduino. And then I stepped out like uh, You're from always talking. Instruments. Never hear. <laughs> Something from what? Texas Instruments. Oh, okay. A launch, a launch pad? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think there was like a course, free course online that I found. Sorry, yeah, it's the 430. Is it the 430? It's from Texas. I don't know. If that's yeah, at X. Well, they make a lot of stuff. They make, yeah, they make a lot you of can, You can use the Arduino environment like this, the energy, energy environment for this uh, development board. In, in, my, in my folder on the site, there's Four or five projects for the uh, Launchpad 432. So, yeah, I'm, they, it I'm should positive the number. It should be they should be very similar. Except the 432 is multi-threading capable, and the other one's not. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Can I rip off Vicente? Yeah. Do what? I'm gonna get photos of your project. I'm gonna do one myself. I can see where the ball would actually Go look in his folder. You only have stuff to rip off. He's got all kinds of junk. 
Oh my gosh! Oh, very nicely done. As we see, here. I, I, I tried to do with a different. You, you see this, right? This is understand. better stuff. If you, you can build find it in better, Amazon, other food. If, if you want to build a better fixture, you're welcome to use lasers. <laughs> okay. You're welcome to stop by whenever. I you can want. draw everything. Okay. Thank you. Well, if nobody else has a project, I have a big project. I I have a I, I you, never, you didn't was here last last week, but. I, uh, when, when I bring the, the robot I'm making, when, two weeks ago or? Mm -hmm. Last week. The Steppy? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's got. A oh, show him the, show him the more, Steppy. More, more or less, yeah. 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 Well, was a walking robot last week. So where, where it the, parked the, in the little square? Yeah, the one that parks in the little square. Little square. It's pretty cool. Using, you know, those little stepper motors that you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is okay. The ones I donated. The ones you donated. He actually did something. Well, I did it because because you you, you gave me two uh, two stick motors. I, I tried to make bigger wheels to to use them. Okay. Increase the voltage, as you said, to 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 reach more torque. He's this is really, really slow, right? An inspirational speech about what got him toward the steppy. Oh, good, cool. This is really slow. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's so slow. I don't know. We got that Hutu router. It's 300 meg. I did throttle it up for up. I throttle it for up at 5 meg. It should be. This is the Google Plus area where I put every day I put what, what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And Leroy and Jim. And Okay, I, I made different experiments with the with the steppers, with the drivers. I show la last week. I think this this video. There it is. This video doesn't use acceleration, but now I change the drivers and I can do the same thing, uh, changing changing the acceleration. Well, those, those those are yours your steppers. Yours. That's nice. How about you just rolled? Where'd you get the wheels from? I did it with, with my laser in Venezuela. Laser cutter. And almost. Oh, oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Dun dun dun. All right. If that was bigger, you put a garbage can on it, and that was exactly where to go and come back. <laughs> wow. I, I, hey, there's there's my there's my thing actually. And this is that'd be neat. This is really yeah. slow, especially going up and down the you know right. the grade on the hill. And if it's heavy. How heavy are your cans usually? Depends on if I've been doing landscaping. Yeah, up. Oh, okay. That's correct, right? It's really, 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 really,
a triangle and an outer cut. I, I started with the, with the O-ring yeah. from China. The O-ring never came. Then I had to use the cable and... Okay. Um, they make um, O-rings about that size that are used on conveyor belts. Um, it's a relatively thick diameter belt. Um, I, I made a, a document to, to put in the in our folder in my folder about all the steps I did with this robot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I have it. Lasered. Mm. I, I, this is a laptop. I never use this laptop. It's close to the oh, no. 3D printer only for I used to copy the, the project to come here with the way and put the folder in the, in the middle of train. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of interesting stuff here. But this was the, the train, remember? That's Lots of interesting stuff is an understatement. <laughs> I, I made a project about to find the position of the train oh, yeah. using cell cell loss, uh, low cell sensors in in the in the opposite uh, in the streams of the of the bridge or something like that. So how heavy is that? Anyway? This is yeah. I mean, it's oh. maybe ten pounds. Or, what is that like? HO or what? And N scale, the small one. Like a fourth the size of HO. So that so that uh, engine is what, like a half an ounce, something like that? It's pretty small. It's yeah. This is the concept, okay? Yep. Using low cells to estimate the train position. Both cells in the to both ends of the of the bridge. You can find the center of mass of the of the structure. All the antennas are different. The 35, 45, and then there's a new design. The new designs, like this, is an old design, so you have to get underneath of it to move it. This is a new design where you, your thumb could go above it, and it has a little bit, a little bit stiffer, but it's much easier to just grab it and pull it straight out. So, um, <coughs> these are. So, mature designs of the original intent. Okay, this is the itty bitty one. Yeah, it's the combat armor. Yeah, yeah, it's called the itty bitty armor. Um, That's the big hog right there. No. Um, this is, so we had like the combat rover, uh, the bitty rover. This is, we call it a round rover because the wheels, you know, there's two rollers, two wheels, but they're based in the center. Um, and this one has wheels based in the back, uh, ultra, or ultrasonic in front, line followers, a bit of one glider. Um, we thinking about marketing it as a half droid and then a full droid. This top has taken a huge redesign. So it uses a 9G servo in the front and a standard size servo in the, the top because it seems like everybody wants to, when they want to touch it, they grab here and they end up breaking the servo. Um, so completely redesigned it to make it actually simpler. So instead of having like nine screws, we went down to one screw. Um, and then the lazy Susan <coughs> feature, the whole idea is just so much easier. Um, then the antenna on this one had to be extremely different because I didn't want the head to hit uh, no matter where it was rotating. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So there, there was a lot to, to be concerned about there. 
Um, even though the servo is in the front, it, this is the front of the robot. Um, so we kept growing. And um, wow. I think you guys saw this. And this was the robot that really was driving our decision. Um, when I say our, I have an intern and a, uh, I have two interns now that are helping. Persuasion. So this, um, yeah, it, it's nicely precise considering it's a laser gear. Uh, but this was one of the robots that was really driving that decision to have a, a top side pinch for the antenna mast. Yeah. Um, obviously, we didn't want to transport it with the antenna mast on there because you could you'd break it right off. But it's hard to get underneath it here with your fingers. And you know, I don't have huge hands. Uh, okay. You know, you know, okay, so that was um, better. Um, and then you guys saw this is um, we nicknamed it the a Weeble, um, the, the Weeble Wobble, the Weeble, because it's like no matter how you okay. um, touch it, it's oh, let's stick this one there. Um, it, you know, it it always uprights itself. Oh, cat, kind of neat. Um, so that one. Uh, came forward, and uh, once we made that one, it's like, hey, you got to build a bigger one. So um, we well, that was an old sign, wasn't it? So that one. No, that up. this one came out because of that one. Okay, was, I think I thought uh, about a year ago that it was one with super uh, size wheels. No, that this is a super size of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll bring out the. So uh, this one. This one, I guess. Um. What you want? That's what I want. Yeah, you can, this, keep, you can keep it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Keep it. Uh, Don't um, have to tell me twice. Hey, wait a minute to make your decision. Uh, so, this one really the idea was to have a low platform or just you know, it has plenty of ground clearance, I like but it has a, a platform just for adding more stuff to it. Um, one of the cool things is like this big rectangle oh, space. That's yeah. where the battery just drops down in there. Um, a couple of these, including the Weevils, they, they just have this a battery cell that really securely yeah. holds it down. Um, yeah, a lot heavier. Uh, so we're still working on this design. The yeah, others are pretty much mature. This is a little water. Power in that. Um, I'll show you. This is our homage to the Mars Curiosity rover. Um, it's like a, I, like, I like this one, too. This is really neat. Just compact. This one has, uh, it's called a, uh, a rocker bogey suspension. Um, the, the, and it's built so very, very similar to the Mars Gear after the rover. Um, if you, if it has to run over a large rock, it can. Um, so any one of these wheels can come up. It's quite, as far as the suspension, it's quite amazing. Um, but the, I was concerned about the, the body of it really tipping forward and backwards a lot. The size is enough for a standard <coughs> stairs. It is not big enough for a seven and three quarter inch stairs. Um, the reason that I couldn't go that far is the diameter of the wheels. Okay, the diameter of the wheels, which were sticking standard with all this stuff. Um, when I designed it for an eight-inch uh, staircase tread, it just looked very gangly. Is the, the long arm suspension? It just it looked wrong. Uh, but when you think about you know how high can it reach? That's that's just crazy. Um, and then this goes almost all the way back, and if they're continually all driven. It's it's pretty nice. Um, I've, I've we got, wanted to put something into it to limit this from just swinging all the way around. But so long as it's on the ground, it's fine. I got a new nickname for that. Doesn't that look like one of the ghosts from Pac-Man? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a that's a ghost one. Maybe Pac -Man I like this one too. Okay. Um, this is that's an inverted neat. pendulum. Um, Inverted pendulum means it basically uh, it's going to turn on. There's an accelerometer that's up here, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 
and it stabilizes the accelerometer. And at that point, um, it turns the servo, and it balances itself. Wow. Okay. So it just rides around like a um, segway. A segway. Yeah. Okay. So it is able to to rock, you know, forward, backward quite a lot. Um, <laughs> So, you know, d depending on if it needs to slow down or speed up, um, it was quite difficult to get uh, like the actually, line yes. follower sensors in here. Yeah. So we put ultrasonic on the front, ultrasonic on the back. Um, these, I didn't score. have 15 millimeter standoffs, this is, so I had to put on 25s. Um, but it is a mega, an LCD with I2C communication, um, the voltage regulator, um, and Almost all these robots have voltage regulators on them, and it's because of Leroy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really it's because of Leroy. Um, there's been many times where he came in here and he says, "I was testing it when my batteries were really good, <laughs> and now I've been playing with it so much the batteries aren't the same anymore." So um, on these, you know, we've got a nice little battery retainer. Um, you can put eight AA batteries in them. Now, you the, increase the battery size. Too. The six wheel uh, weevil there, yeah, um, it'll hold two battery slots, or t two packages of batteries. Mm -hmm. um, how, how will it go through those two batteries? No, it, 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 that would last 45 minutes or so for two sets of batteries. But the idea of using two sets of batteries is one is going to be for the control system, the other one is just for motors. Okay. And it depends on how you wire it up. Um, so when we did this one, um, there's actually two compartments. So if you only want to do one battery pack, you move this wall to this location. If you want to use two battery packs, you just move the wall down, and it holds you know, two battery packs one around top the other. Have Those you got battery packs where the rest though kind of make it top heavy? Yes, and you want it to be top heavy. Yeah. Um, if you've ever tried to balance a um, a broomstick, and you've got the the head of the broom way up in the air, and you can bounce around so much easier, easier um, versus balancing a toothpick. Impossible. So what I did was I got all the weight. I tried to get all the weight as much as I could all the way to the top. Yeah, so, you, um, it's if you look at most of the inverted pendulum, the weight's all the way at push, the top. Push the weight as high as you can. Um, so like with this one. Um, and I looked at some of the other inverted pendulum type robots. Um, they had metal gears, they had all this and that. And we're trying to stick with the yellow gear motors, the same yellow rims and tires, because I've got hundreds of them. Some, um, some of them it's use, a very standardized look if you, if you look at all the robots. Some of them use servos, some of them use yeah. stepper motors, some of them. I like, I like yeah. the little kickstand. Idea, though. isn't that nice? So, it, it actually this is your starting position, it's kind of yeah. Um, it stabilizes, knows what it's doing, then it brings the kickstand up, and and off it goes. Off it goes, right? Um, part of the trouble with inverted pendulum you know, people designing them, they don't put encoders on the wheels. So, what happens is if yeah. it starts tipping, it'll stabilize itself, but it'll end up over here, and the robot doesn't know it. So we put in quadrature type, you know, AB encoders on both wheels. Um, so, do you have the code for that yet? We are writing code now. Okay. Um, all of these have uh, full 3D CAD models built, and we're doing um, like the 20 second videos of how they're assembled. Um, it, it's a flyout kind of design. Uh, where it's like, hey, here's the bottom, and here's the part, here's the part, here's the part. So that's more of a marketing thing. Um, we're going to be using clips or pieces of those um, CAD models to say, hey, here, add this piece, now add this piece, and add this piece. So it's going to be like a combination of IKEA and Lego instructions of how to assemble stuff. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be really easy assembly instructions. Uh, then I got one more. So. Um, <laughs> the uh, let me see this. You can check out the uh, the battery it's holder handle on it. Um, it actually, when it's laid down, it makes a nice kickstand or whatever. So it's laid down like that. Um, so this is one I've been working on for the past three or four days. Um, 
I hope we'll get a cable. I, I asked one of the interns to take his time and um, make a walking robot, and it was a disaster. So um, I took his design, and in one evening, um, I completely redesigned it. <laughs> uh, just to show him, here's here what we can do. Um, I like this. This is interesting. Obviously, it looks like a bug, right? Uh, it's a hexa walker, so, uh, six legs. Um, the each leg has a springy type design into it, and that absorbs vibration because it's walking. Um, we have been driving this thing around; it's quite interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it kind of goes. <laughs> With short wheels and the speed of the motors, it's just a. Do you have a battery pack for it? We don't have it. I, I just, I came back from an a installation at 4:30, put everything in a box, and ran out the door. But um, this is something we added today, which the whiskers. I think they're too long, but it, it definitely has a bug look. Mm -hmm. So they look like they're not terribly sensitive. Yeah. Um, we drove it into a wall and it clicks. Yeah. Oh, so okay. the further you go out, obviously the easier it is to the torque. Mm -hmm. But um, okay. yeah, once you get some weight in the front, it, it definitely walks and pounds up the wall. I I never got my inverted pendulum robot to work right. I had one that never never worked right. Um, mine had the same problem. Everybody else has had that. Most of these. Are going to be interchangeable codes, except for you know, the, the pencil and believe it or not, the bug uses nearly the same code as the other one. Yeah. All of this pro promotion on the right and um, it's and moving on the left. Turn the motor on. Turn the motor on. Turn the motor on. Turn the motor off. Exactly. Now it does have a 50% wheel um, as encoding because you don't want it going pound, pound, pound. You want it to be halfway. Um, 180 degrees out on the synchronization. Um, so that's why we went with a 50% wheel instead of like a different encoding. Yeah. So, Ray's been busy. Ray's, Ray's um, put his interns to good use. Well, <laughs> well, you said it was about a year and a half we really got started on the, the two uh, robots. And um, during that time, I've been making improvements, making improvements while I was at town, and um, I got to re-laser them, and in the past month, um, two, two months, two and a half months, um, we've come up with all the new revisions, and um, as well as the That's cool. you know, seven new robots. So, um, and yeah, so the one that you're playing with there, Leroy. Yeah. I, I flat out copied off of NASA. Yeah. Okay. It it is similar, but you know, inspired by it's inspired by NASA, <coughs> absolutely. But each one of their wheels is able to articulate at the wheelbase to turn. Yes. And with the lasering and the the cost involved, I said no. Uh, we we have to keep it at a certain size of a robot and um, to keep working I, that way. Um, what do you want to see? I don't know. Um, yes. <laughs> so what's, so this, 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 this one's neat. I like this And you needed more space. I, like I wanted something I like that, that um, weird one that Vincent accelerometer blew me like some Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, I wanted them to be detachable. Um, so so it, the whole so, one there with their yeah, that one's fine. I remember this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That I designed it in. I like walking a robots, total so. of about thirteen That's hours. Wow. Um, so it's been a tough one. Um, That's it's basically something I've been thinking about for years. It's exactly the same. Nothing. Only it doesn't have wheels. Um, it's, it's the same as. It's very close to the other ones. Yeah. Um, just doesn't have wheels. There are some of the pieces that we we made interchangeable. Um, the grill, the, the front right there where the ultrasonic's at, is an exact copy of 
um, a couple of the others. Yeah. Um, the Rocker Bogey um, Curiosity Hunt version. Um, so th there's some, some neat features on a lot of these. Um, I, I'm really happy with it. Uh, the only one we've had problem with is the one that you were there, the bug. Um, I'm going to keep calling it a bug. Uh, we broke a leg on it. Um, and we don't know why. We don't know if it was a bad spot in the plastic or what. So in the kit design, we're just going to have um, two extra of the small legs and one extra of the larger leg um, in case somebody didn't drop it and hits the yeah. spring knee and it's too hard. Um, this, I think you were heading on to um, a question earlier. Why did I put this brow on there? It looks like an eyebrow. Um, the cups. Part of my goals when I design these is I do a layout and I, I push all the parts nesting as close as I can and I try to do 8 by 24 inches of, of a cut. That's all the space I had left. It was it. Um, this, these pieces fit exactly together, all these, everything. Um, and we get really efficient on where do parts come from. Um, with this one, we needed more of these spacers. So spacers come from here, 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 right there, behind the motor, up here, up here, <laughs> right there, right there. I mean, they're they're coming out of, you know, taking holes out of this robot everywhere we could. It's like a scrap is <laughs> lower single digits percentage. Oh, yeah, the scrap is minuscule. You look at the scrap, and you're like, you can't tell what was made because you know there's just a little slivers here and there um you know all these edges are touching so you have a common line between this part and that part there's zero scrap between them. um on some of the the robots because the edges have to divot inward so the, the screw doesn't hit it screws out um over off. here the divots inward so all you have is this little inch long Two millimeter wide and it just nice. drops out. Um, it's it's neat, but it's trying to be very efficient on the plastic. Um, it also reduces lasering time because instead of cutting that line twice, you're just like, okay, it's a common common line. It's been pretty cool. Um, so this is all the robots that I've been working on that I designed in the past, uh, I guess, total two years, two and a half years. Um, and impressive. happy to say about seven of them um, have been in the past two months. Uh, so my the iterations of, of each one. Well, my no, my design time has gone from weeks and weeks down to 13 hours total. Um, the bogey was in a weekend. Um, this. That's because you've learned stuff, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've gotten so much better at this. Yeah. Were um, you painting somewhere? Yes, it's overspray. It's, it's, it's actually um, kind of a it's just design your overspray. robots with some overspray on them. Um, <laughs> you guys are familiar with Instructables. Uh, yes. So, um, so one thing that we're doing is um, every component on the robots um, gets a tutorial, whether it's a one-page, two-page, three-page tutorial, and it's you know, how to connect your Uno, how to make sure that it's talking, communicating, to get a blinky with the, the blinky light. I, granted, those tutorials are already out there, but we wanted to create a, you know, a common space that where we can say, you know, whatever your, whichever one of these robots, here's a tutorial to make sure your ultrasonic distance sensor is working. It's connected right, you've got the right number of components, and here's how to test it and make sure it's got the right distance. Um, we're also doing the, the encoders, the um, buzzers, accelerometers, all this stuff. So we're just doing um, tutorials, a real, you know, download the PDF, read the tutorial kind of thing. So the folks, are you selling these? You've been selling them for a while? We have not sold any for for a year. Uh, last May, we sold um, like 20 um, at a uh, date amateur radio convention, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. convention. Yeah. Um, and it was our test market to see, you know, are people interested? What's our problems? And uh, the problem was we didn't have good instructions. That's, that was the biggest problem. Um, the second problem was we only had like four robots and they looked so similar. 
Um, so people are like, well, what's the difference between this one and that one and you know, difficulty? And but so you, you now, didn't sell 20, you did, so the feedback you got was- The people. feedback was really good, but people were saying, I would like to have better instructions. I want to know, does this piece work? Does that piece work? As you know, maybe before I fully assembled it, but you know, it, it was really positive feedback. We've got um, two companies that want to um, sell these as a line of their product, and we've got um, a couple of maker spaces. There's a guy that he. He basically sets up maker spaces in schools, high schools, and he's wanting to sell these with every maker space. So, hey, here's you know, 20 robots to go along with it to help teach students. The whole idea of these robots is high school and early engineering, early college, so that students get um, you know, how to program the controller. Um, you don't want to just do a database or you know, how to look up information in memory. It's boring. I mean, it just drives us crazy. So there's all these people with great talents, but they get bored so easy. So if you give them something tangible that is relatively low cost, um, you know, they're so much better off. Um, so that's where I also wanted you guys' feedback of at a school, at a, you know, early engineering, what are these work? What are they, what, do you guys think that it's a, a, Fair, viable selling prices. Price. What, what did you sell your twenty hand press? We had them anywhere from sixty-five dollars up to one hundred and forty-five. So we were selling like these for sixty-five because there's there's really not that much plastic or lasering time in them, and they were sold with um, Uno's, not Omega. I don't know why it's been built with Omega, but it can be. Um, where this one was more expensive because it's it's really it's two kits. Um, you know, upper level, yeah. hand tilt, and the lower level. Um, but that one uses more plastic because it's literally it's a double set of each yeah, leg. Um, it's, it's a big kit. It takes like twenty five minutes to cut that. So on the hand tilt, what, what do you figure to mount on that? Do you figure to put a camera on? Or um, well, it has each of these is actually an ultrasonic. Okay. okay, so it's a starter if you want to use Ultron. Ultron is only a dollar forty, if that. Now it's ninety nine cents. cents. Yeah. So if you decided you wanted to go with something else, you could put a camera on it. This would be quite easy to mount a camera on the top. And, and everybody that's doing this um, right. telepresence, right. you know, they they want to put a camera on the top. Um, the rocker bogey. Uh, design has um, Actobotics mounts, um, so that if they wanted to mount something up higher, including a camera. Yeah. Um, well, could you take like this? If you think of a module, can you take this module here and put it on on there, or on any of these? Um, all of these are not. They're not made out of acrylic. Um, here's why. Uh, so here we go. He did that on purpose. I did it on purpose. <laughs> so um, I, I do it with everybody. So what is uh, that? Uh, it, oh, uh, acrylic is brittle. It's yeah. easy to break. So what um, is this ABS? This is uh, high impact polystyrene. Okay. Um, you can roll this stuff around the table, off the table, down the, the carpet, and uh, across, you know, just roll like bowling ball. So does it um, have butadiene in it, or what? well, then what's this? Yeah. yeah, they're all made of high impact polystyrene. Yeah. The only the black uh, standoffs are nylon. Um, I've been laser cutting and stuff for a while, and it has not made me sick or right you know, hurt my respiratory system. Not to my knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> <just constantly. laughs> I can't run them all anymore. He's wheezing. <laughs> one, one, one question I have, I guess, is probably a, maybe a dumb question, but what what, what are the antenna doing? Uh, oh, the intention is to get the um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and accelerometers and compasses as far from the motors as possible. Um, that way, if you have an accelerometer, it's not going to be 
and but especially the compass. The compass is, yeah. is very compass. Yeah, compromised. Well, it's really, it's methodical. Do you have any accelerometers on these systems yet? Uh, Not yet. We're working on that stuff. Gotcha. I had a compass on the uh, Viti Rover originally. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, I used a styrofoam cup. He's advanced far past the styrofoam cup. Um, yeah. That's yeah. is that the bitty? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a, a a vastly dry, different <laughs> an evolved version of the bitty. Yeah. So he uh, for for his transport uh, trash can transport, he had to do the test code and he put the compass way up on a styrofoam cup now, I think. To get away from that electrical. And then Ray came up with the antenna design to and the antenna to, to compen has changed a few times. To compensate for the fact that we may need compasses. And you don't have to have an antenna. And you don't have to have a compass. Really cool. <laughs> and you don't have to have a compass. But uh, we're working on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, our Android, and um, iOS. Yeah, so, uh, you really answer my question about modular. Oh, I think it's something like um, that. Because they're um, high impact polystyrene, instead of being acrylic, the acrylic is actually hard to make a hole in. You have to melt the hole. Right. Hole. But this is all. This you can drill and tap. Right. And you can mount whatever you want. Right. So um, it, you can use it as my. I mean, I'm thinking about like in terms of marketing, where you could have a a module like this that could be put on any of the other ones. Um, if they like this. This really is the only one that's a, a two-piece uh, kit, where it was a, a half droid and then the top section was an add-on. Yeah. Um, some of these they're already so grown that it's difficult to add another piece. But to take this section and add it on to the Weevil, mm -hmm. the you know, the four wheel, it would be easy to add this top section and add it onto the six wheel would be easy. Um, or just to take this top section and redesign it to actually hold a, a larger camera. Yeah, to hold a GoPro. Yeah. 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 Could be do it. Yeah, so, I mean, now you want me to do a fan tilt gimbal for GoPro to go on the big six-wheel robot. Sure, why not? OK. <laughs> Two weeks. You, 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 need, you, need a, you need a camera on, you need a camera <laughs> on, on curiosity. <laughs> I'll be back in two weeks and be like, damn, man. Um, I mean, I can see that thing with a camera and a GoPro. Well, it has a lot of stuff on it already. Yeah. <coughs> a battery pack here and a battery pack slid in the back. Uh, the only thing I don't like about these battery pack ideas is it's, you know, each pack is an eight cell AA batteries. Yeah. Um, Would you look at the 7.2 pack? Yeah, I was looking at the. And um, 18650s. 18650s. Yeah. Those are nice. That that uh that little robot that I was going to bring in today, but then because Ray was here, I'm using 18650s on it or 16850s. Whatever those are. 18650s. Whatever. I've got a 16850. Start to make them with 18650s. Six. 16850. Part of the reason I've not gone to those batteries is because of how easy it is to get access to a double A battery, rechargeable double A's. And you know, you start going to 18650s, a lot of kids, you know, they're going to get stunned at the robot. And then you tell them it's a special battery, and they're like, yeah, they start to give, it, give up. So, so, yeah. Just and their price is a little high, too, not standard. Harbor Freight was giving away 24 packs of, of batteries yeah. a week. Yeah. Yeah, you got to stay in the tube. It's good in class. And, you know, there's batteries the dialed. They can actually go up to the secretary in the front office and say, hey, it's you have to step down or a step And they can do that. These, be because of the regulator, you could put in 9 volt batteries. You can put in. You know, yeah, it's got to be a step whatever. down. You, there's versatility in them. But, but, you know, we're, I, I'd be happy to take any. Constructive criticism you want to do. But, uh, so what, what do you figure these two, either one of those waves? Do you think? I don't know. I do have a scale, and we're working no, on I'm all sort of that. seeing those delivered by a drone. I mean, a small drone. <laughs> and then roll the rest away into the house? 
<laughs> no, I actually am. I mean, I've been looking at drones quite a bit. That's kind of what I'm seeing. They, they're not they're not too big to be delivered by a drone. These. Um, well, since you're saying talking about the selling and delivering stuff, um, we're looking at selling these as a kit, pretty much in the form that the six wheel and the four wheel robots are in. Um, they'll include a switch. A battery container, wheels, motors, all the black. Um, the stuff that really is very specific to it. We, I don't know that I really want to sell it with an Arduino or a Mega. Um, that way, if some student burns out his Mega, he doesn't want to, you know, mail it back to me and say, "Hey, replace this," because it was broke when I got it. Um, but. Uh, other things we're we're trying to make this stuff as durable as possible. Um, Jim helped us out on you know figuring out the you know, stuff breaks when you throw it off the uh, into the desk. And, uh, I think you threw it at me if the truth were known. <laughs> um, so you do your own lab stuff, huh? No, we were we were at my shop. Yeah. And we literally were just rolling them off into the <laughs> desk to see what part would break. Um, we we only broke one of these, right? One of these did break. Not not this, but wasn't one of the styrene didn't we do something with one he, of the styrene? He, he handed it to me. No. No bigger one? That that was an old one that, that was actually he owned it. Um I I threw I rolled it down the way I it was expected it broke. Um I don't know if I broke it. Yeah, it, section it, was, off it, here. it was something weird that yeah. broke. But, but but generally every time you've done this, was, nothing's really broke. It was still relatively usable. Um, on the one that you've got there, it, basically there's four legs that holds the motor, and we were talking about well, how much do you need to reinforce or stiffen up that leg? And uh, we went through all the different pieces that are going to break, and that white shaft. It goes from the yellow motor mm -hmm. gearbox mm -hmm. to the wheel. That's the breaking point. Really? It's that white shaft is going to snap before anything else. It'd be better to to you to feel this this notch and, and to use use a whole, whole. It, That space is used for other stuff. <laughs> that space is used in the design for other parts of the okay. the robot. Um, like I said, th you know, this stuff is most of these robots will be cut out of an eight inch by twenty four inch section, and it's just for um, how the laser is being used. Um, we're we're trying to be really efficient on using the styrene. I don't want to waste stuff. So every every one that we can really make more efficiently means we can make more from it. What's the white shaft made of? I assume that white shaft comes with the motor, right? Oh, it's, yeah, it's built into the motor. Um, that's a, a modular piece. It's probably that that motor, black tire, um, the yellow gearbox, the yellow rim. Those are the most expensive pieces on the entire robot, I mean, except for the Darduino controller. Um, Is my little close Yeah, here? yeah. <laughs> That's when it gets laser cut. Yes. So is your primary business laser cutting? My primary business is I import laser machines gotcha. and redistribute, re sell them throughout the United States. I like this one too. Canada and it's, it's just right. a neat little uh, compact. So this cuts really nicely, I guess. Yeah, uh, we cut these at uh, 13 to 15 millimeters per second and about 70 percent power on a 60 watt laser. Yeah, like, um, and that's just for prototyping. Once we decide we're going to go into some production, we'll hop this, up to an 80 watt laser. I just find this one fascinating. Bit. I don't know why. This one's just fascinating. No, it's, 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 it's got a grip on it. Well, it, it, well, it looks it looks science fiction so we got too. The <laughs> and yeah, you need to come down and upgrade. Right there, just a couple. Just smile. Like the smile. The body section is. It's like two dollars worth of plastic. That is, if that, a dollar worth of plastic. Let me get my wallet out. Yeah. <laughs> Not until you come get it. So, um, nice. So, um, I'm gonna see if I can document, take some pictures of, of these. 
Um, and we're going to do the, I like other stuff. Um, Leroy? Yes. Jim, I would like you guys to, uh, you guys, I feel like I'm bossing now. You guys just um, get your um, feedback on you know, an estimated price on some of these. Foods. That's one of our next uh, bigger topics is you know, trying to figure out what to charge for them. In a classroom, do you see it as one per student or yes, one for one per student? Pair? Okay. One per student. The idea, it, the problem that we have right now is that um, each student can't take their robot home. And I think that's wrong. Um, I think every student be able, should be able to take their project home, <coughs> take the robot home, and at the end of the semester, they should own it. Okay. It's not that expensive. When you start looking at um, you know, the, the robots that they're being taught with right now, mm -hmm. Can you yeah, they're so expensive that a school has baby. to say this is a three or a five year investment. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it, it just shouldn't be that, that much. Yeah. Considering it's a hundred under two hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, for school, that's... But you know, some of these are sixty five bucks. Yeah. Um, if the school is already doing stuff with Arduino, they already have an Arduino controller now. So they should be able to buy this for $35, $45. And then put their own. Right. Put their own stuff onto it. And so, as they want so to invest more and more money, to say, hey, yeah, I can I can buy this and buy the next piece. Cost the three large pizzas, you can have your own. Basically, yeah. under 100 bucks, you could have a, a robot you could take home at the end of the Right. Uh, and some of these, the, the way that we're trying to ship them and stuff, um, and, and this counterminds what you're talking about with, with shipping them. We want to be able to put it into a box that um, it's sold in this box. And you open it up, it's like, okay, half the box is empty. But when you assemble the robot, it fits in the box. That way you can take it home. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, easier. The M box doesn't. <laughs> was it the, you have a good way to convert and transport the, it when you. If you got some of you have been here when I brought mine back in and I bring it back in in the box that it was intended from, and yeah, it works good. Yeah, the original box that we designed all of our little video rollers actually perfect. Yeah, it was a seven by seven by seven, yeah, whatever. It, it also makes storing them in the classroom easier if everything fits into one box. That's like right. yeah. Actually, that, that box that the Biddy rover came in, I actually have two robots in that. And I can, as long as I take the wheels of them off, yeah, I can fit two of them out. in it comfortably and carry them around. So it's, it's not a bad idea. Okay, so my box is emptier now than it was when I got here. No, it's not. <laughs>